This is the Gemini Express LRS version of the Jumper T20. And while Express LRS and the new Gemini mode can seem a little bit confusing, it's actually really simple to set up. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Jumper T20 Express LRS Gemini, as well as how to configure it for Gemini only receivers, how to configure it for normal Express LRS receivers, and how to set it up so if you have a fleet that is mixed with both Gemini and normal receivers, you're going to be able to get the best performance. But first, what is Gemini and why is it so special? Well, in normal FPV controllers, what we do on the sticks and in the switches is transmitted by one transmitter module to your quad. But Gemini has two transmitter modules on the one chip. And what that does is it sends the signal over two slightly different frequencies. 2.4 gigahertz and 2.44 gigahertz, so thereabouts. But while this doesn't increase the theoretical maximum range, it does reduce the number of fail safes because it increases the link quality. But there's also a catch, because you need to have a Gemini receiver, which is two receivers on the one chip. And if you're not using a Gemini receiver with a Gemini transmitter, well, that actually gives you less range and less penetration because that second transmission is just creating more radio noise. So how exactly do you get the best performance? Well, you need to start with setting up your radio in general. So let's get into that. So first thing I'm gonna do is turn the radio on. The Jumper T20 does come with a model pre-configured, but I'm going to show you how to set up a brand new model and go through that entire process. First, we're going to press the model button once, and then using the scroll wheel, we're going to scroll to a new line, press the scroll wheel once, and then press it again to create model. Now we're going to press the page across button, which is the middle button here, to page across into the model setup. To give the model a name, we're simply going to press once on the scroll wheel, and then you can scroll through to all the letters. So I'm gonna call this Express LRS. To confirm the letter, press the enter button. If you wanted to go with a small case letter, hold the enter button down until it transitions to a lower case letter. For the, now we're gonna scroll down, don't worry about timers customizable switches or trims, pre-flight checks, leave those as they are. When you get to ADC filter, you'll notice it's set to global. The ADC filter is used for planes and helis, not FPV quadcopters. So you wanna set this, if you're flying a quad with this particular model, to off rather than global. We then get to internal RF. Now, Express LRS uses the Crossfire protocol, which is basically how the Express LRS module in the back communicates with the radio. So we wanna set that from internal RF from off to CRSF for Crossfire. And for external RF, we want to leave this as off. Trainer mode should be off as well. And USB joystick, we're going to leave that as classic. Now we're going to press the page over button to go from heli setup, flight modes. You'll see on the mixers tab, it's preset to AETR. This is the channel map that is sent to Betaflight. If you've got a quad without plugging a LiPo in, what you want to do is just plug that into Betaflight and then go to the receiver tab and you'll be able to see the channel map for your quad. Mine is AETR1234. On my radio, you can see that the channel map here is AETR and my channel map in Betaflight is also AETR. Now, if your channel map in Betaflight is different to your radio, you're gonna to need to either change it in the radio or change it in Betaflight. And if you've already got a number of quads set up on a specific channel map, like this is one of 10 quads that I have, if not more, and they all run on the AETR channel map. So if you did need to change it on your radio to make sure it corresponds to your quads, this is how you do it. So we're gonna hold down the enter button, that's gonna bring up the sub menu, and then we're gonna scroll down to delete and press enter. And we're gonna do that for all of those channels. Then we're gonna go back up to channel one. 
So we're gonna click on that once and then we're gonna scroll down to source and press enter again. And once that is flashing, whatever stick we move, that is going to change what is on that channel. So as I move the pitch, you can see it moves to the aileron or when I move roll, it goes to aileron. When I move the yaw, it goes to rudder or when I move throttle, it goes to throttle. So because I'm A, which is roll, I'm gonna move the roll and that's gonna set it. We're gonna press the back button once, back button again, and one more time to take us back out. And we're gonna go into channel two, and we're gonna do that again. So A, E, do the same for T, and then last one, do the same for your fourth channel, which is roll. Yours might be a different order. We need to set channel five, which is also known as aux one, and this is gonna be our arming channel. And for Express Lores, this is our arming channel, and it needs to be a two position switch, such as either SA or SB. Express Lores only sends an on or off signal on channel five because it is sent on every packet, whereas things like your other switches are sent on every other packet. So you can't use a three position switch because three position switch has low, medium and high as opposed to the two position, which is just on or off. So for channel five, we're gonna press that once. I'm gonna scroll down to source, hit enter, and then we're gonna flick the switch that we're gonna use for arming. So I'm gonna use SA, and then we're gonna hit back three times. And then we're gonna do the same for channel six. We're gonna use whatever switch that we use for channel six, which I use SC. Channel seven, again, same as before. And then channel eight, we've got that there. If you wanted to go and add more channels such as these custom buttons, these switches, you can absolutely go and do that if you want. Cool, now that we've got the mixes set up, we're gonna hit back and we're gonna just tab across and we're pretty much all good to go in terms of our model setup. But what we wanna do is just make sure everything is working correctly by checking the Express LRS Lua script. We're gonna hold down the menu button to go into the system menu and we can see that we've got tools, Express LRS. This is the Express LRS Lua script. And we're gonna hit enter. And if that loads, it means that we've set up our model correctly and the radio is communicating with the internal module. So we can see that the Lua script is working. We can back out of that. If you get a loading error with the Express LRS Lua script, it could be because the mode is set to off for internal RF or you've turned external RF to crossfire. Um, and that's expecting a separate bolt on Express LRS module, not the internal one. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that internal RF is set to off and internal RF is set to CRSF. Fantastic. Now, if this is your first time with Express LRS, you are gonna to need to download the Express LRS configurator. So we're gonna to go to expresslrs.org. And then on the main page, we're gonna click download configurator. This is gonna take you to the GitHub page where you can download the latest Express LRS configurator for your computer. So I use Mac, I'm gonna use DMG. If you use Windows, you can use one of the Windows ones. So we're gonna go into the configurator and we're gonna select the most recent version available. So for me, that's 3.30, but you might be 3.4, 3.5 or whatever. And then under device category, we're gonna scroll down to jumper. Now you can see there's jumper 2.4 gigahertz or jumper 900 megahertz. If you've got the 2.4 gigahertz version of the T20, you need to select jumper 2.4 gigahertz. If you have the 900 megahertz version of the T20, you select jumper 900 megahertz. For 900 megahertz, you'll see that there's Aon T20, you would select that. And then in your regulatory domains, you're going to see a few different versions. Now, if you're in Australia, you may wanna select 915, if you're in Europe, you want to select 868, or if you're in any of the FCC countries like USA, Canada, you want to select FCC 915. Whatever regulatory domain that you select here for your transmitter, you need to make sure you select the same one when you are flashing your receivers. Now, I don't have the 900 megahertz version of the T20. I have the 2.4 gigahertz version. And if you've got the 2.4 gigahertz version like me, make sure you select jumper 2.4 gigahertz. Then from the device, you wanna select jumper Gemini T20. Now we're gonna flash first with USB. We're gonna select HTX pass-through. 
In terms of regulatory domains, you want to select ISM 2400 so you get the full one watt power output. You want to set your binding phrase, so type that in and any transmitter or receiver that shares the same binding phrase will automatically be bound. Leave UART inverted. You can go and put your home Wi-Fi network and password in and what that's going to enable you to do is when you're updating, not when we're doing our first flash, but when you're updating your radio for future versions, you can just enable Wi-Fi and it's going to connect to your home Wi-Fi network and you can flash it without any cables or having to manually connect to Wi-Fi. But for now, we are going to need to connect via USB. Then we can see under manual serial device selection, we've only got Bluetooth incoming port because we haven't plugged our radio in. I'm gonna take a USB-C cable and plug that into the very top. And on the menu, we're gonna see three options, joystick storage or serial. And what we wanna select is USB serial VCP. And then from that manual device selection, if we give it a bit, Give that a few moments and we can see we've got Edge TX coming up. So we've got Edge TX selected, we're not going to select Force Flash and we're going to press the flash button. And this might take a few minutes, especially if the first time that you've done this. And it's going through. And because I've already done this several times, it's really quick for me. So you can see writing. And that's done. The update the Lua script, you don't need to do that because it already came with the correct Lua script on it. And we're going to hit back and we can unplug our radio. And I always recommend just turning it off and turning it back on again, just to force the reboot because sometimes it doesn't force reboot in, on the internal module. So to make sure this works, we're gonna take our quad and then we're gonna go back into beta flight. I'm gonna plug that in. Cool, and we can see if we go in to connect, and we go down to the receiver tab, We've got our channel map. We can see that as we move our sticks, the right channels move and we flick our switches, that all works. And now I'm gonna show you how to flash Express LRS via Wi-Fi. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is go into the Lua script. So we're gonna hold down the menu button and go into the Lua script. So we're going to go into the Express LRS configurator. We're going to select the latest version. Like before, we're going to go down to jumper in the device category and select 2.4 if you're using a 2.4 gigahertz radio or 900 for a 900 megahertz radio. Then from the device, you want to select jumper Gemini T20. And it doesn't matter whether we select Edge TX pass through UART or Wi-Fi, we are going to need to enable Wi-Fi later. So go and set up your configuration like we did before, and we're gonna click build. Now this is gonna go ahead and build the firmware version and it's gonna pop up in a window. And what we're gonna do is we're then gonna drag firmware.bin to our desktop and we're done. Then from here, we're just gonna minimize that and we're gonna go back into the radio, into the Express LRS Lua script and go down to Wi-Fi connectivity, hit enter and hit enable Wi-Fi. And yep, enter Wi-Fi update, enter. And then what we're gonna do is go back into our computer and we're gonna look for the Wi-Fi hotspot, Express LRS TX. Now you might need to turn your Wi-Fi off and on a few times in order for the network to show up. And then we go Express LRS TX. If it does ask you for a Wi-Fi password, it's ExpressLRS in lowercase. Then we go to our web browser and we go to 10.0.0.1. And we go over to firmware update. We're gonna hit choose file. And then we're going to select the firmware.bin file that was on our desktop. And we're gonna click open and we're gonna hit update. It's gonna upload that to the transmitter module. And after that's uploaded, we're gonna see a target mismatch error. Uploaded image, unified ESP32 target. We're going to hit flash anyway. 
Update complete, please wait a few seconds for the device to reboot. And if we go back into the ExpressLRS Lua script, we can now see it says T20 Gemini 2G4TX. Now you have your radio set up and a model. To set up the T20 for Gemini only receivers, we're going to go into the ExpressLRS Lua script. We're going to set the antenna mode to Gemini. And as long as you're exclusively using Gemini receivers, you're good to go. But what if you were just using normal receivers and not Gemini ones? Well, what we're going to do is go back into the Lua script and we're going to set the antenna mode to either antenna one, antenna two, or switch. Now you might be wondering what switch does. Well, Basically, it switches between antenna 1 and antenna 2. So just select the option that you want to go with. Now, what about if you had a combination of normal receivers as well as Gemini? Most of my fleet are actually running normal ExpressLRS receivers, and I only have one or two that are using Gemini. And the way I have my radio set up is I just use one model for all my ExpressLRS quads. And what we're going to do now is create a second model and restrict it to only Gemini receivers. First, we need to duplicate the existing model and we're going to rename it to Gemini. Now we're gonna scroll down to internal RF and under the receiver, we're gonna set that to 0, 02. Now we're gonna power on our Gemini receiver and we're gonna let that connect with our transmitter. And once they're connected, we're gonna go into the ExpressLRS Lua script. We're gonna set the antenna mode to Gemini. And we're now going to go to model match and turn that from off to on. And this means that the Gemini receiver is only going to connect to the transmitter when we have the Gemini model in the radio selected. But what if you get more Gemini receivers? Well, you may think you need to create additional models or do something flashy. You don't need to. It's actually really easy. You can add them to this existing Gemini model. And what we need to do is go back into the Lua script. We're going to turn model match off. They're going to power on our new Gemini receiver. Then once they connect, we're going to turn model match back on. And this is going to tell the receiver to only work with the Gemini model of your radio. And that's it. You're pretty much good to go. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. If this video has helped you out, hitting the subscribe button will help me out in return. I'm Darren Allett. Until next time, don't forget to send it.